What's up, everybody? My name is Joe Brown, and this is Heresy Financial. Now, if you haven't already started to hear about it, you are going to start hearing about this very soon. The trillion dollar coin plan is back. Now, this idea to create a trillion dollar coin in order to solve the government's funding needs has popped up from time to time over the last decade or so, and it is simultaneously praised by some economists and also outright dismissed by most policymakers. So in this video, we are going to talk about what it is, what it isn't, some pros and cons, and the potential results of putting into action the trillion dollar platinum coin idea. Ready? Let's dive in. Right now, I'm sure you're aware of the problem that the government is facing on trying to figure out its debt ceiling issue so that it doesn't default on its principal and interest payments and have some catastrophic economic consequences as a result. One of the solutions that is becoming popular yet again is creating a trillion dollar coin. But in order to understand why this is a viable solution that constantly comes back into popularity, we need to understand how governments fund themselves. So a government can only get its income from two sources, taxes or borrowing. At some point throughout the lifetime of a government, the tax burden gets so large on the economy that a government can no longer raise taxes anymore because it's too politically unpopular. Once a government reaches that stage where they can't increase the revenue through increased taxes, they resort to borrowing. And borrowing is voluntary. So they go out and they say, does anybody want to loan us some money? And then we will pay you back with some interest. Now, because lending is voluntary, you have to offer a high enough interest rate in order to entice people to lend to you. However, keep Keep in mind that governments carry a legal monopoly on violence, which means they can always enforce getting their hands on money if they want to and if they need to. Therefore, the risk of default on that government debt is usually lower than something like a corporation who can't force somebody to buy their product and they have the risk of going out of business. So because of this, government debt is usually considered far safer and so they demand a much lower interest rate because there's a trade-off between risk and reward there. Now, governments at this point can encounter problems problems when one of two things happens. The first thing that can happen is that the government taps out the economy's ability to lend money to the government. There just isn't any more cash left on the sidelines in order to lend to the government. Now at this point, that also means that the government really can't get any more by raising taxes because it's already tapped out both. At this point, the government's only choice left would be to uh, raise interest rates that they are going to be paying on debt in order to entice new people to lend more money to them because there's a greater reward. A second problem could be that the government's ability to actually repay that debt or uh, make interest payments comes into question. In which case, even if there is available cash in the system, lenders may not be willing to lend to the government at such low interest rates. The lenders might demand a higher interest rate to compensate themselves for the increased risk. In either case though, you have a situation where if a government wants to be able to borrow more to continue funding its spending, it's going to have to raise its interest rates. The problem is that this usually happens at the same time as governments are strapped for cash. Hence the reason why they need to borrow more, which means that they may not be able to afford paying a higher interest rate on new debt. Enter the central bank. The central bank is the institution that creates the supply of money. And in the case of the United States, that's the Federal Reserve. During these times, the central bank will usually step in and absorb some of the government's debt load. So how would that work? Let's say there's a bank over here who has made a loan to the government and the government now owes that bank that principal and interest on that bond, on that debt. The bank would sell that debt to the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve would create new money out of thin air, give it to the bank in exchange for that debt, in exchange for that bond, that loan. Now the government owes money to the central bank instead of this regular bank. They owe the money and the interest to the central bank. Now this bank has free cash that they can do whatever they want with. But what do banks do to make money? They make loans. So at least some of that new cash that now that bank has that was created out of thin air by the Federal Reserve, they have the ability now to make new loans and at least some of that will be loaned to the government. So this process demonstrates how the central bank will create money out of thin air and then get that new money into the hands of the government indirectly so that the government can fund its expenses that are in excess of what it can borrow or tax out of the economy. Now, to the extent that this happens, you have an increase in the supply of money. Because at this point, the government is literally spending money into existence instead of spending money on person A that it took or from taxes or borrowed from person B. It's monetary expansion, not monetary redistribution. So what's the problem with this process? Well, it still relies on the government's ability 
to be able to borrow. Even though the end result is that you have a central bank that's creating new money to fund government expenses, the process still relies on the government's ability to borrow. And there are some big legal fences established to make it difficult for governments to borrow, especially in times of severe political polarization or drastic increases in spending. And this is where we have the plan for the trillion dollar platinum coin come into play. You see, in the constitution explicitly, the federal government has been given the authority to mint coins and set the value thereof. Now, typically this is gold and silver, so why is the plan always a platinum coin? Well, platinum coins specifically have a special provision that was given to them in US Code 31 Section 5112K, which allows the secretary to issue a coin of a size and value with complete discretion. So why in the world is this in there? Well, there was a time when platinum got pretty expensive and they wanted the ability to issue smaller platinum coins specifically for collectors to be able to collect and they wanted the ability to just set the price of them and so this was written into the code and that was really the extent of it there was no additional thought created to it but the language the legal language here allows for that discretion to go either way up or down which means that the treasury by law has the legal authority to create a coin and declare the value of that coin to be anything it decides. Now, a very important distinction here, this would have absolutely no impact on the price of platinum. It is not a declaration of the value of the metal that goes into making the coin. This would be a proof coin that they could declare the value of being, a, you know, let's say a trillion dollars, which means that the coin itself is worth a trillion, has nothing to do with what it's made out of and has nothing to do with the value of what it's made out of. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, what good would it do for the treasury to create a coin and then just declare it's worth a trillion dollars. They would still have to sell it to somebody to get those trillion dollars, so what good would it do? They can't actually use a coin to fund their entire budget. Enter again our good old buddies at this central bank, the Federal Reserve. That coin would be deposited in the Treasury's account at the Federal Reserve, and the Treasury would be credited one trillion dollars in exchange for the coin. Now, this process should sound very familiar to you because it's the exact same thing that happens when the government borrows. The government first creates something and declares it has value, either a bond or a coin, and then they sell that to the Federal Reserve, whether indirectly or directly. The Federal Reserve buys it by creating new money out of thin air. That new money makes its way into the hands of the government so that they can spend it on whatever they want. So if in practice it is actually so similar to the way that the government just borrows right now to fund its expenses, what are the differences? Well, this may come as a shocker, but technically, Technically, this adheres to the spirit of the law more than the current process, which just adheres to the letter of the law. This is because when the Federal Reserve was established, they never wanted the ability of the Federal Reserve to be able to monetize government debt and fund expenses the way it's funding them right now. And that's why debt monetization, just the Federal Reserve outright lending to the government and not using a bank as a middleman is, is illegal. And that's why they go through banks as a middleman right now. So right now they're adhering to the letter of the law, just not the spirit of the law. So the platinum coin, from a legal standpoint, there's a good argument to be made that it's actually a better process from a legal standpoint, simply because the treasury, the federal government, has the authority by the constitution to mint coins, set the value thereof, and specifically with platinum coins, the code states that the secretary has complete discretion on the size and value of a proof coin. Now, above and beyond this being a better legal option, this might actually be a better political option, simply because this would come down to the sole decision of the president. And in a time like today, where you have the potential for default on debt because of political gridlock, the ability for just one man to say, make the funding happen, mint the coin, that becomes a more and more attractive option by the day. So I know I've painted a pretty bright picture of the trillion dollar coin at this point, so why does it seem like virtually every policymaker publicly and outrightly just dismisses the idea? Well, really there are two reasons. The first reason has to do with optics and confidence, and the second reason has to do with the Pandora's box, what might happen next. So let's deal with the first one, optics first. Many economists argue that creating a trillion dollar coin could actually be worse than outright default. And the reason for this is because 
confidence in fiat is very fragile and it rests mainly on the confidence in the government to enforce its value. And if a government cannot even fix its political gridlock issues enough to fund its expenses and they have to resort to a flashy trick like saying, hey, this piece of metal is legally worth a trillion dollars, it could ironically end up undermining the confidence by trying to avoid a collapse in the confidence. Kind of like trying to put out a grease fire by pouring water on it. Now, the second reason why it's dismissed is really because of the Pandora's box that it opens up after it's used for its initial emergency purposes. Because really what this solution does is it removes 100% any of the hindrances to government spending. Now, this might sound like a good thing to avoid political gridlock and just government has a, an unlimited infinite pocketbook, but not so fast because hindrances to government spending are there for a reason. And as the saying goes, don't tear down a fence if you don't know why it was built in the first place. Because if a government has to step over hindrances and work its way through difficulties in order to spend money, number one, it makes sure that there's at least some broad consensus and that it's worth it whatever they're spending that money on. Now that consensus might be wrong, but at least it provides a barrier to, to say, hey, let's try and make sure it's worth it. And if there are no restraints on spending, you need no discretion on how it is spent. And money flow directs real resources in an economy. And so with no restraints, the possibility of colossal misallocation of resources skyrockets rapidly. So in summary, it is definitely a legal solution to use the trillion dollar platinum coin idea to get out of the current bind. They could retire old debt, they could resolve political gridlock, and they could avoid defaulting on debt. However, the possibility that this results in even worse economic catastrophe is greater than most proponents of the plan are willing to admit. So as for now, in my opinion, it is a good thing that policymakers are so ready and willing to just dismiss this idea out of hand. But never underestimate the incompetence of politicians, especially in times of crisis, because their jobs depend on it. As always, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.